You're my world. I've got a house in Vinewood. I bought a lot of property, basically. Right? Simon is here today. In movies, uh, a lot of contribution comes from Bala. Now, lyrics written by lyricist Patagote to today Madan Karthi's songs, I know it by heart. Is there something that you want to share for the aspiring musicians? Basically, like once you finish 12, if you are not doing engineering, there is something wrong with you physically or mentally. So, I came back to square one. No money, zero, absolutely, and started doing music again. I am from Periyar Nagar and Periyar Nagar rocks. Hi everyone, today is a very exciting day for me because uh, we're going to get started with the very first episode of The Positive Frame. I'm going to be talking to my friends Simon and Sheba. Simon is a music composer in the Indian film industry. He's composed music for about three movies and uh, Sheba is a singer and what makes it even more special is that they are a couple. They're going to be having a candid casual conversation with us. Congratulations to you because your new movie Satya is due for release. I saw the trailer and the background score for that movie is phenomenal. Thank you very much. Uh, so far it's been like uh, so good like um, because uh, uh, we really worked our heart out for this project. Uh, basically, it's a group of friends working on a film together and uh, we are quite glad that you know, it turned out uh, very well. I think I'm getting good positive reviews uh, right from the critics and also from the audience. Simon, since you mentioned about friends, uh, can you tell me what friendship means to you? I have a reputation for not having like, you know, long time friendship with a lot of people like uh, I had a lot of friends in school and uh, they were my friends till school like and then when I joined college I had friends from college so I've been moving on and on like that and I have quite a little uh, few friends who've been with me for some time uh, whereas when it comes to music like you know friends are the only people like you know who can just say something bad at your face you know they can just throw it out I play some nice song to them they say the song sounds it doesn't sound good like it sounds bad you know the word bad doesn't come from everyone they try to be like quite sweet on your face mate. Uh, so it's a very good thing to have like close friends who can say when you do something bad, bad, straight onto your face. Talking about friends, you have a friend sitting right next to you. Is there something that you want to share about her with us? Yeah, uh, she got a promotion from being a friend to wife right now. <laughs> well, I, I prefer being his wife than his friend. It's, it's not a very nice scene to be his friend, trust me. <laughs> Ask his best friend Bala, who's been his friend for almost 15 years. I think his best friend I would consider is his friend Bala and they've been school friends and they have the same interest. Uh, he's a complete uh, uh, cinephile and uh, they discuss a lot of movies. Uh, Simon is here today. In movies, uh, a lot of contribution comes from Bala. So yeah, he's his friend and I, I prefer being just his wife. <laughs> Simon, can I say that you are three films old in the film industry and that you would have come across certain lessons from the film industry. Is there something that you want to share for the aspiring musicians? Okay, the first thing three films old, you know, sounds a little funny to me because already I'm feeling a little old. So I don't want to use the word <laughs> old there. Uh, but aspiring thing, like uh, there are so many things. Uh, if, we, if I want to say something to aspiring musicians, I can keep saying a lot of things. Because uh, I think I myself, I'm still an aspiring musician. Because there is no uh, accomplishment in music or art, uh, any of such. You just die learning. That's the uh, truth, basically. And I wish like everyone realized that, you know, the whole part of art or music, anything, is a learning process. 
you can't master anything it's always uh, better like you know like when you said like all my three films and the songs what i've done you know i never cherish whenever i listen to those songs i can only find some fault and i wish i could have done something much better than this but of course like you know we have to just uh, keep doing the uh, only thing is um, art is being sold for fame and money these days and a lot of uh, young musicians and young talents who are coming in i wonder how many people are coming in for the passion or the desire more than the fame and you know the all the colors and things like that like what they see uh so i wish they come in with more passion and uh, for more music like you know to give something good to people you might get recognized you might not get recognized but still you know you can you should just do what your heart wants to do basically and i think that's one thing which i would like to tell everyone see when well, if you see in, in the if we go back to those days uh, some of the people uh, in in art for for example michelangelo or uh, beethoven they even lost their sensories like their eyes and their ears by the time they can give their best to the world you know what is the cost they paid it's li- it's literally the things they love eyes are so important for a painter and uh, ears are so important for a musician and they lost it to give something to offer themselves to the world and they didn't do it for fame they just did it for the love and and for the for the passion they had for the art and when you look at it today i don't think you know including us you know i don't think if our passions can drive us so uh, di- drive us there that's why i feel it's kind of uh, a little uh, Uh, you know the there's a dampness on the whole spirit of art so i wish that the young people in the future can bring that that spirit alive in from the from this from this art of music and painting or anything being any be it any art simon i heard that you love watching movies as well as playing video games which is your favorite watching movies or playing video games both no no, no. i play games whatever bores him Like you know what? Uh, yeah, we watch as a movie. If he runs out of his movie collection for that week, he will play game. Right, I'm still addicted to GTA, so I am on it. I am on the trip for like last ten days. I've got a house in Vinewood, and I've got uh, I bought a lot of property basically right now. GTA, I'm mm-hmm. like damn rich. Like you I know, think whatever he puts, he's unable I, to do I, in I, real I, life. He's doing it on the video game. <laughs> I own a house in like you know Hollywood. What is it? Hollywood still no. Yeah, so like that. Other games? No, he like he finishes uh, all the games. Christopher. I finish it fast. Thing is, I don't have time. Once this movie got over, I just bought this game. You know, I just wanted to finish it. Not and just this game. Any other, the all the other yeah, shooting games and all. Sure. He finishes all levels. Like he he is like advanced. There'll be people sitting around him and watching him play. That's how good he is. You need the inspiration, no? Like you know. For what? Uh, that's more stress basically you game it's like it's not easy it looks very funny you need to put in lot of energy effort for that it's like just like doing music <laughs> my stress is here you are here right yeah, here right <laughs> simon uh, there is a common perception among people that you have to be agile in your way of working perhaps you have to do things right the very first time you try doing it what is your take on it and also tell us what all did you do before becoming a musician Mm. Okay, doing it right on the first time. See, I don't think any great inventions were done right on the first time. Mostly, uh, see, like uh, when you say uh, when you pay a huge price for a, a craft which is made by somebody. See, the imperfections you just pay for the imperfections. Basically, when you get a handmade a pottery or something, the more imperfect its price, more because the imperfections is what that makes an art uh, look more beautiful. basically so there's nothing like perfect or doing it right for the first time and uh, me uh, when i wanted to become a composer uh, back then it was uh, i am from a very like lower middle class family where we started and uh, music was considered taboo basically engineering yeah and i did my uh, engineering so i am supposed to do engineering strict because it was a rule in our country basically like once you finish 12 if you are not doing engineering there is something wrong with you physically or mentally so you are supposed to do that so i was also made to do that but uh, later uh, and you know my my passion i had for music i wanted to do something in music but uh, basically i don't know music i didn't learn music as a child and uh, 
my parents never sent me to a piano tutor or anything like that in fact i didn't even have a keyboard back then i used to there used to be this church uh, next to my house so i used to go in the evenings and uh, clean the church and there's an old uncle who used to let me play the harmonium for 10 minutes if you clean if the- i clean the church like you know and get it ready for the service and everything so he would let me play the harmonium for 10 minutes so just for the 10 minutes i used to be like so regular to church like basically <laughs> so that's so uh it started then uh, eventually you know i just uh, started doing like lot of jingles albums and recordings then uh, due to some family circumstances i couldn't pursue my musical career because it didn't pay me uh, basically i had no money and then i joined a radio station uh, leading radio station here and uh, i was doing pretty well with the radio station and then i got into television i was acting for a year uh, for a, a, a for star network i was acting for a year in a tele serial and then finally i was quite lost you know until my wife back then my friend who came in and said what are you doing with your life you wanted to become a musician see where you are you became a rj and you know now you are an actor what is this so i came back to square one no money zero absolutely and started doing music again <laughs> you have to tell us uh, who or what gave you the confidence that you can be a music composer one day um see basically confidence in the sense uh, my home like you know you can't blame people back home like for them it's quite new they want their son to be like you know have a secure job have good salary and things like that and uh, basically they all cared for me and they didn't know anything about it like we are completely from a non filmy non cinematic like you know people very ordinary day to day people office goers and that's about it and uh, inspiration like you know when i started like uh, i was very clear about what i wanted to do i never had any doubts on that basically i know i will become a musician i know i will become a music composer and i know i can fight into this i, I always know that and i'm still fighting basically that's the truth i know that but like you know uh, at times life takes uh, takes you in different uh, directions like you know uh, some struggles and uh, some personal uh, issues and lot of things like you know life is not just your ambition you just go 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 that's a different kind i don't go like that basically i like to live my life as i achieve so as i go you no know, i get lost i actually i got lost eventually for a while and as i told you earlier like uh, ashiba was the one who brought me back to what i wanted to do <laughs> actually the story is uh, yeah he it's uh, similar but back then i was his friend and before even before he could join a radio station i used to do some not just me a couple of my friends uh, we had a gospel band and we used to do he was working for jolly abraham and for his studios he has done uh, uh, almost 10 albums of jolly abraham and that time uh, we used to go and do harmonies then later in life i got to know that he was in, uh, he was working for radios and i used to go and meet him because he 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 used to ask me to come for, come and sing some jingles on radio for him so and i i thought his work was very good and but you know that's when uh, i think he was trying to take some inspiration in life uh, out of me so that you know we started just talking and i said what are you doing with your life you know if you want to do music i think you should stick to this at uh, least stick to that and purely give yourself at least uh, a year or two completely for that and just see what where it takes you you know you have to give if you if you're very passionate about something you need to give yourself some time for the, what you're passionate about so why don't you do that i think and he took it very seriously i never thought he'll take it very seriously and he started pursuing a lot of people and uh, he and he got a very good offer that's how his first movie triple five happened i can see that uh, shiba uh, positively inspires you in many ways maybe you should tell us about uh, one advice that you got from your life partner at a very pivotal moment uh, in your life advice in the sense uh, see she is not this kind who comes and tells you do this do that she is not that kind of advice basically it's a uh, it's inspiration like you know see uh, especially people like us when we suffer like you know when we want to Uh, achieve something and when we are going through some struggle we always need somebody uh, to share our burdens with basically nothing like you know i just have to come and share my disappointments with somebody and maybe if uh, maybe some four or five directors would have turned me down you know my songs would have gone to dust or something i just needed somebody to come and say this is how it happened and you know somebody to console me saying you know uh, because as an artist like you know 
sometimes you start doubting yourself you know that's not a right, nice thing to do so like uh, imagine when five or six people come around and say you know this stuff is not going to happen it's not working out and suddenly you will get a doubt on uh, on yourself saying like are we on the right path are we doing something right you need somebody to say that you are on the right path just because some five or six people are doing saying this is not going to happen it's not that's not right what you are doing is correct and you just push what you are doing and that's that's exactly what she was uh, doing to me because uh, personally i had a very rough time uh, when my mom was sick and uh, uh, i was uh, i couldn't concentrate too much on music and everything back then she was a support uh, together both on my personal life and on my professional life so basically it is this kind of support that you need like you know somebody to constantly say that you are good and you can do this you know there's nothing wrong with you like you know because definitely there are going to be thousands of people for anybody who's going to start now uh, there will be enough people to put you down saying you know this is not happening you are not like so good like you know uh, you can be this nobody will say that you can do much better that word it's very hard to find that word and uh, she also says i can do much better most of the times even now like you know even for this film when i work and i play some songs she says like uh, but i think you can do much better why is such a ordinary song or something like that see that kind of positive vibes you know like basically that's more important and you know that's the kind of thing that she still gives and she used to give and uh, that kind of keeps motivating me basically principal i'd like to add something to this um see what uh, i i am able to uh, motivate or uh, you know as he says encourage him more only after wedding and and um, uh, because we are able to spend time more time together and we are a couple now and that's what couple should do so i like to bring two thoughts out of this the thing is if a partner in in marriage wants to do something and really is looking and he puts in a lot of hard work and one day the the success is awaiting and it will come and i feel that while we are at it that we have to make the journey for the other person a very smooth and a wonderful journey you know it's not about the end what success you make that's not what you will you will remember later in life it's the experience that you go through the journey that you go through and if you can make it hell for the other person it's very very difficult you know there's nothing they'll go, like to go back and cherish on so i think that's the advice i would like to leave with all the other couple you know uh, to make make the journey for the other person a little a little cooler you know <laughs> and uh, and not make it up because they're already doing something out of the out of the box and they they're going on a low road less less travel so and you are adding adding burden to it i don't think you know it's it's a nice thing to do it it just strains your whole, uh, your relationship but before wedding i i would only say as i had my life and i had to do my own things in life and where i could not uh, spend much of time with uh, his journey and his dream i think i i i can't give i can't contribute all that he did before wedding uh, you know to uh, i can't say that i i was completely the reason i can, i could, i have just i was just the uh, uh, the like, like you know you keep ma- lit a lighting a match and finally it ignites so i was just a small trigger and uh, i after that even i am sure that even if i would have not been there anywhere in the scene he would have still made it so it's about believing in yourself come what may and he did that he solely did that simon is it true that uh, you watch one movie per day different languages different genres tell us more about uh, this whole movie watching experience take us through it okay a uh, movie sir uh... I was always passionate about movies as much as I am passionate about music. If I should say the truth, see, because that's the truth. Uh, usually, a musician will never agree to that because I'm supposed to say I love music. Of course, I love music and everything, but uh, I always think movies and music go hand in hand. And uh, I don't watch uh, movies for music, or I don't do music just for movies. I kind of treat them as independent properties. A film is a film, and music is like music by by itself. Uh, and movies in the sense i used to watch a lot of movies earlier because movies were like a uh, huge escapism for me like as i said like my travel and everything when i used to have a very hard time uh, i ha- i was uh, i was suffering from basically insomnia i couldn't sleep i can never sleep till like 5 or 6 in the morning so what i have to do is i just watch keep watch because when i go to sleep you know that's the time where you start recollecting all that your day's activities and you know too many things come and trouble you so i started watching movies basically as an escapism 
I got into fantasy first like you know I like watching I didn't I kind of uh, hated reality you know because reality was getting too much for me so I started with fantasy lord of the rings and you know things like that like uh, fairy tales like you know where it's always a good a good ending and things like that I know it it uh, uh, makes you feel very happy uh, personally I was I am a huge fan I'm still a huge fan of war movies any kind of war movies because uh, uh, I know war was a very uh, the, like you know it's uh, very dark thing that we had to go through but war movies i think uh, is always my inspiration my passion like you know i, I would almost seen all the war movies i'm seen i always feel that you learn something from every movie you watch if even if a movie is like total solid uh, nonsense you learn how not to make a movie or you know how a movie shouldn't be you know at least that you learn from watching that kind of a bad movie so it's like good movie or bad movie it's uh, almost like a course for me i try to finish that course complete that course and come out of it I I am not this kind who walks out of the theater in 10 minutes or 15 minutes no I like to sit watch and see what because there's something good out of every movie and uh, whatever research. it is and uh, movies basically help in a lot of research basically like true incidents there are a lot of true incidents right from olden times right from Buster Keaton times and uh, uh, Charlie Chaplin and then like people talk so much about Charlie Chaplin but uh, nobody remembers Buster Keaton another uh, equivalent legend who lived along with Charlie Chaplin so there are so many things like that and so many unexplored fronts like you know people have almost achieved so many things which we still think like you know oh my god this is too much and they've done it like long time back basically uh, i love movies like and i still have a movie to watch after this interview <laughs> by the way there goes my sleep huh? well that makes me want to ask you the next question tell me three movies uh, which is your all time favorite Okay, that's a that's really a difficult question. Mm-hmm. Basically, what I will do is I will tell you some three recent movies which I watched and which I really enjoyed the most. I think that will be like more easy because more than recollecting the best of all the three movies, I think it's quite a difficult thing. The movies which I recently watched, I mean the last week, and I really liked this. Uh, this movie called The End of the Tunnel. Uh, it's a Spanish film. It's a brilliant movie. I think everyone should watch it. Like you know, who has seen this? Spanish. It's a Spanish movie. It's called End of the Tunnel. I think that's a very nice movie and uh, another Korean film called Time Renegades. That's another brilliant film, a uh, very good movie. And uh, of course I like to tell them like one of my mo- most favorite war classic Wanderings Express. So I think uh, Frank Sinatra's Wanderings Express is one of <clears throat> one of the movies which I like the most. I've seen it a lot of times. So that's all. If, if you want, if you want me to give a list, it will be like a huge thing. Okay, give so, me the three hundred. Don't forget about three. Tell us about one person who inspired you professionally, and about one person who inspired you personally. Okay. A uh, person inspired me professionally is my friend Ravi. Okay. Uh, my friend Ravi Shankar. He is in Slovakia right now. And uh, basically, if I want to say music, like you know, eighty percent of my music, like you know, I should always uh, owe. I always owe it to him, basically. Uh, back then in college when i started working for uh, gospel albums and everything uh, he was a sound engineer in the studio and uh, see I, as i told you earlier like you know a family like me uh, like mine like you know where we come from a completely non filmy non musical background where regular job is the world and you know that's what is going to help us and uh, it basically i also had that kind of a uh, thing right from my childhood like i wanted to become a doctor this and there's nothing wrong about it but still uh, i was also brought up that way but uh, this person this ravi shankar you know the engineer he is the one who actually broke those ideas from me basically he said you don't have to live this life like you know this is not like you know you have one life and you love music just go ahead and do music you know see it's a very hard thing like you know back then i that's the time i finished my schooling and i'm uh, i am like i don't know music but i'm just looking at music like you know as like you know as a kid watches something fancy in the shop some a sweet store like i'm looking at music with awe oh, i'm looking at it and he says you don't have to look at music or oh, you can still do it you're talented it's not something which you go and stand and look come and do and you know see uh, back then it was very difficult thing today like music is very easily available but uh, by the time when i finished my 12th standard i think music was a sophistication you can see pianos only in rich houses and everything and it's like that it's like a very huge thing and um, he is one guy who helped me professionally and uh, who also increased my professional standards my listening basically and he introduced me to a lot of uh, new genres of music and uh, a lot of other things he introduced like lot of new stuff uh, 
and uh, like you know he was quite advanced back then like you know he had a cd collection he had a book collection and it was like uh, it was quite new for me like you know like i was 18 year old or something back then so he is one person i kind of owe it like professionally and uh, personally uh, inspiration as i already said shiba is there and uh, my other friend bala as shiba said he is there and uh, another important person is keith he is uh, he is professionally and personally he is another inspiration he is keith peters uh, the ace bass guitarist from uh, here from india so he was a quite he was quite a senior musician when i even started doing music uh, when i started doing music he was like already legendary he is playing for rama and he has been playing for alai pai and all the biggest ones and uh, uh, if you can see all my old albums some stupid music i had done but uh, just the bass will be like sounding so good in the album because he was so sweet enough to come and help me out in all my work right from this uh, right from my scratch work he, he was always a part and even till this film like till satya which is my recent work uh so he uh, i also over to him and of course as uh, we already said bala my friend uh, and uh, bala introduced me to another different world of movies as i said this movie buff and everything we have a dedicated computer in bala's house just to download films so basically it's like that so in, he introduced me to the complete uh, film kind of it like you know basically from a musician to a composer to do music for films i think bala was one of the major inspirations for me shiba we know that you are a singer Tell us about who your first audience were. Ha! Huh. Well, that's a lovely question, and I'm very happy that somebody asked me that. Um, of course, at home, uh, my my grandparents were Carnatic uh, singers. My my mom, uh, my mom's mom, and my mom's dad were Carnatic singers. So um, music was uh, was a natural talent. We were born with it. My sister was my first teacher. she is 5 years older than me and she used to go go to school choir we had a very good school choir back in our school and she used to learn all the songs and she used to, there used to be they they used to teach harmony uh when she was just in 6th or 7th she used to come home and uh, she used to ask me to i was just in first standard or ukg in fact uh and she used to ask me to uh, sing the alto and she used to do the soprano so i could sing in um I, i could sing in parts even while when i was uh, hardly 7 uh, or 6 uh, years old yes 6 or 5 years old in fact so the my uh, first trainer was my sister but my first audience is a very interesting uh, he's a very interesting person and he uh, i completely believed when he said that i could sing well it was none other than uh, the uh, than the uh, late padma shri hanul manual he was our music teacher and when i was hardly say, uh, i was in my second standard i remember one day walking uh, he used to play this beautiful piano in our, uh, which was which used to be seated in our auditorium so one day um, uh, i just i you know we had a music class and one uh, once it was over he i remember him calling me uh, and asking me to sing something and i sang uh, raindrops on roses from sound of music and um, he was absolutely impressed <laughs> i don't know what he heard and he, he just uh, seated me on his lap and he said uh, good child that's all i remember and then he took out a card and he wrote a, a letter to my dad saying that your daughter has a great voice why don't you bring her to junior mma practices that happens on wednesday i still remember it it's so vivid in my mind because i felt i feel it's a great honor to hear that from padma shri han manual himself and uh, i just came home and i gave it to my father but my father didn't do anything about it but uh, but the audience i had that day and uh, and the kind of inspiration he he injected into me at that small age of 7 it never left me and that's what made me even become a a pursue singing with uh, with some great passion so yeah that's the answer to your question That's a wonderful answer, Shiba. What is this one little secret uh, that you want to share with budding singers? Okay, number one, I would uh, want all the singers to sing from their heart. I think a lot of soul music, singing from your soul, is really missing. Uh, and they are looking about, they are talking about technique. All this was not there when I was growing up. You know, technique. You know, you should not do this. You should not do that. Forget about all that. Just start singing from your heart. number 1 and number 2 is yes you go to a proper class and you want to become a professional singer you should sharpen your skills 
but you don't listen to others if they say that you are not up to the mark and you and uh, you you know you don't have a great range you don't have a, a great depth all that forget it when you start singing from your heart all that will fall in place yeah, and i think if you're taking professional uh, music as your career you should sharpen this uh, your so- source by going to classes and learning uh, music and uh, sing for for the love of music not because some, you want someone to look at you and you want them to appreciate you you know you don't have to sing for that you know you, there's a lot of other things you can do you can uh, you know i think that if you want to sing as a as a singer i think you should first do it for yourself because you love it and you want to do it and the last but not the least all singers should learn their songs by heart i because i i, I in from a very young age i i did that i know songs right from uh, i know especially tamil songs i'm very well versed in tamil songs though my voice doesn't suit tamil songs i know lyrics uh, no lyrics written by lyricist patagote till today madan karki's songs i know it by heart so that in, that's an effort i put and i think singers if they are singers they should learn to sing their songs by heart i know that rapid fires are so cliche but i still decided to do it because i couldn't come up with anything creative all right so i'm going to be asking one question to simon one question to shiva okay simon how do you start your day <laughs> reading newspaper shiba what is one song you will never skip on your playlist anjali anjali from do it uh, simon which is your favorite food fish shiba what did you do last weekend i tried reading a book and simon disturbed me <laughs> simon which area of chennai are you from and what's your connect i am oh, from oh. Awesome question. I am from Periyar Nagar and Periyar Nagar rocks. Yeah, he's kind of a patriot. So proud of being part of North Chennai. Yeah. Uh, Shiba, what is your favorite three-word sentence? Oh, I make it three-word. Yeah, you're my world. Simon, easy one, okay? Who is one person you want to watch the sunset and sunrise with? Ah, uh, the person right next to me. Very easy. <laughs> Shiba if you had no internet for a week what would you do <laughs> I'll read books really I would love to do that if, if if I'm not disturbed by my husband The last question to Simon what are the three biggest life goals for you right now uh, to do something in music like what I've started to do to achieve something big and uh, number 2 to be happy and to make everyone around me happy uh, shiba this is the last question and my favorite one too how happy are you to be a woman and why oh wow um there are a lot of reasons first of all uh, god uh, has given me the ability to be a nurturer which no mother man has so i think that's the best and the most uh, what do i say quint essential element of being a woman So I'm proud of that. I'm very happy about that, especially of for being a woman. Shiba, I think we should end today's conversation with a beautiful song from you. Why don't you just go ahead? I I always sing the song for Simon. So uh, let me sing that. Okay. So. Unnai onre kete, unmai sunne vindum. என்னை பாட சொன்னா என்ன பாட தோன்றும் காதல் பாட பாட காலம் இன்னும் இல்லை காதல் பாட பாட காலம் இன்னும் இல்லை காலாட்டு பாட தாயாகவில்லை உன்னை ஒன்று கேட்பேன் உண்மை சொல்ல வேண்டும் என்னை பாட சொன்னா என்ன பாட தோன்றும் என்ன பாட தோன்றும் 
Simon and Sheba, thank you so much for coming over and answering all the questions so patiently. Indeed, it was so positively inspiring and it was such feel-good conversation with both of you. I just want to wish both of you success in everything that you do professionally as well as personally. Sending you a lot of love. 